Едно, две, три.
So welcome everybody. I'm going to go ahead and put a link to the meeting minutes in the chat so you can see the agenda and also so that um, folks can add themselves to the attendee list. Um, we usually start about five after, um, but please do be aware that the entire meeting is um, being recorded and it will be posted to YouTube. Thank you very much, Ivana, for sharing the, the agenda and the meeting minutes. Yeah, welcome. Please feel free if you've got agenda items that you'd like to discuss today to add them to the agenda. Um, we're pretty liberal about the agenda, um, quite intentionally. Interestingly, uh, some of our best um, uh, some of our best meetings have uh, started with no agenda. So. Uh, don't don't feel like if there's an agenda posted there, and like don't don't feel like you shouldn't or that you shouldn't post anything. Yeah. Like it's it's you're definitely welcome to to add anything that uh, that you feel um, should be spoken about. No, definitely. Sort of reminds me of my my background is in string theory, and when I was a graduate student, I was at Rutgers, which at the time was the number two place on earth for string theory, and the way they ran their group meetings was in the same style as Quaker spirituals, which is to say that everyone met at a given time in their common room and you sat there in silence and you waited until someone was moved to speak. And it was considered very rude to have prepared anything. And this led to some of the most interesting group meetings you could imagine, uh, especially sitting out there on the, the edge of physics. Kind of like a network. Nothing happens until somebody, until some system speaks up. Hi guys. Um, should we add at the bottom of the agenda after the announcements and social media team thing? Yeah, please do add it. So we've got typically a stock agenda, which is the events, announcements, and social media. So yeah, down after that, feel free to add yourself. Um, okay. You know, because typically the the events, announcements, and social media go pretty quickly, so we do this sort of upfront. Cool. Uh, I'm gonna ask somebody to add something to the agenda because I don't have an easy way to add the, add to it. So if someone could add. Um, a item about speaking about next week because next week uh, will be December 24th for the meeting. So. And with that, let's also get started. So welcome to the next uh, Midwork Service Mesh meeting. Uh, we have a weekly meeting every Tuesday at 8 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, we also participate in the CNCF Telecom User Group, which occurs every first Monday at 8 a.m. Oh, excuse me, first Monday at 8 a.m. Pacific and third Monday at 3 a.m. Pacific. And the next call was uh, was yesterday at 3 a.m. We also have. Uh, sorry, the next call will be. Uh, we'll have to check to see if they're doing anything on the on the first Monday. Uh, we have the CNCF networking uh, working group, which is currently being rebooted, and that that will occur every two weeks at nine a.m. Pacific time. Uh, actually, I think that that I think that's incorrect. I think that they they're setting it to. Uh, I. Actually, I need I need to double check that. Um, but does anyone know if Tuesday, December seventeenth, is the correct time for the CNC of networking uh, networking working group? Uh, 
Um, okay, I, I don't I know. Did, uh, so last time was uh, <coughs> it was cancelled. It was just after KubeCon. Uh, so it was supposed to be on uh, Thursday, December 5th. So next one should be the 19th, I believe. Yes, it's 19th. It should be like uh, 11 a.m. Uh, Pacific time. Yeah, because for some reason I have Thursday listed in my in my uh, in my mind. And so that's what Thursday. I'm trying to it, it is Thursday. Yeah. So um, if we could if we could uh, have someone double check and put the put the correct time on that, that'd be, that'd be good. Uh, cool. I am on the on the invite. I'm checking it right now, and it's there. Okay, so the next call then is on is on Thursday, December nineteenth, and so we'll mm -hmm. update the agenda on that. Yeah. Cool. We have um, a few major events uh, coming up. We have um, we have uh, DevConf. Uh, we had a talk that was submitted, but I uh, but it was declined. Um, we have FOSDEM 2020 coming up. Um, there is an SDN room, which is going to occur at FOSDEM, which is in February 1st and 2nd. There is a KubeCon and Cloud Native Con Europe at Amsterdam coming up on March 30th through April 2nd. The uh, call for proposals is now closed and the notifications will go out approximately January 20th. There is a uh, there is a NSM con uh, at KubeCon EU that we're looking to uh, that we're looking to set up. So we will post more information about uh, about this as time goes on. Yeah, the, the the wheels are starting to turn on that, but we need to get up the you know the event site, the CFP, the prospectus for sponsors, etc. But if you're interested in, if, if your company is interested in sponsoring NSMCon, it, it may be a good idea to just start warming the idea. Um, part of the reason the prospectus isn't up is we're still working through sort of budget and therefore sponsorship levels and that kind of thing. Yeah, I would strongly, um, strongly recommend taking, um, um, getting that set up with your, with your budget and also, if you would like to speak, to start thinking about what you would like to, uh, to speak about. Uh, it's a bit unfortunate, but the time for KubeCon uh, is a bit sooner than, than usual, uh, at least for, for the Amsterdam one. So definitely start thinking about about potential topics as well. Yeah, and, and you know, for those of you who who are doing or looking at international travel, it's also often good to start having those discussions with your management. The next open networking in Edge Summit, um, which was originally ONS, has now been rebranded to ONES. I mean, you have to have it <laughs> um, It could also be ones. Uh, is going to be in Los Angeles, and um, the, the call for proposals are just going to close on February third. We have for uh, the. Do we have uh, Lucina on the call? Good morning. I've just joined. Oh. Hi. Cool. Okay. Um, all right. We have the social uh, social community. So if you're able to give us a quick update on that, that'd be fantastic. Absolutely. Uh, with holidays and post KubeCon, this week was a little slow. We got one new follower. Um, followed seven more folks and posted six times. This week we've got some things scheduled to go out. Um, we have posted the keynote videos from Network Service Mesh Con and a high level session videos, as well as a new stack article that was featuring Network Service Mesh. Links to those are in the meeting notes. The plan for this week is to post individual videos from Network Service, Con, Network Service Mesh Con, and those are scheduled to go out as soon as um, 30 minutes from now, incrementally. And oh, we've got one, two, three, four. 
oh, we've got about 10 things scheduled to go out in between now and the 20th. So there'll be an increase in activity on that side. And aside from that, if the contributors podcast is available, we can post a link to that. And once we're ready to share the day zero event at networks uh, at KubeCon Europe, we can post save the dates and sponsorship available and sign up. Cool. Thank you very much. And, yes. Uh, yeah, as um, to reiterate, um, there is, the videos have been posted, including the slides. Um, in the announcement section of the agenda, you will find a link to the NSM Con video, uh, video site. Um, I don't know what's at the YouTube uh, link. So that, is anyone able to elaborate on the YouTube link that's in the announcements? I'm sorry, what about the YouTube link? I'm just curious as to what, what is in the YouTube link. And that's because there's a, there's a YouTube link listed in the announcement, but nothing uh, nothing posted about it. Ah, uh, yeah, no, there, there's a channel for NSM. So it turns out on the NSM Con page, if you go to the NSM Con page, all the videos are linked from the individual talks and each of the talks is individually linkable. So for example, if you've got a talk you want to point someone to, if you go to the NSM Con page on the Network Service Mesh IO events page, that will give you, a, you can take a link for that talk, you can give it to someone, it'll point them to the talk, who the speakers are, the slides, and a link to the videos. And the links to the videos from the NSM Con page are all within the context of the playlist for the entire day. Um, so it is really the one-stop shop um, for, hey, I, I want to go and find out about something or I want to go point somebody at something. Um, the other thing I'll point out is apparently the current winner in the who's getting the most views sweepstakes is the SRV6 talk that Daniel Bernier did, which is kind of interesting. I enjoyed the hell out of that talk, but I was not expecting it to be the most viewed so far. Cool. So, uh, yeah, if you want to recap or you want to review or you didn't get to attend, definitely, definitely go watch the video that you're interested in. Sure. We have, uh, we are now entering a holiday schedule. So we now have back to back December 24th and January 31st. So the question that I pose to all of you is what would you like to do over the next two weeks? So, um, and we, we, we can definitely cancel uh, between on the 24th and 31st. Um, is there any reason that, that we should, uh, that we need to move the meeting instead of canceling? Is there anything urgent that's, that's coming up in the next couple of weeks? To the, to the best of my awareness, it should be relatively calm. So, um, yeah, I mean, I would be okay with canceling the 24th and the 31st. Is, is everyone else okay? Don't all speak at once. Uh, I am okay. Uh, we still have the channel. So maybe just uh, post uh, a message here, like in the minutes, and just let be, just let the folks know that, okay, if you need something, we are on the channel. If you need an urgent discussion, we are available there. We can zoom if needed. But... Yep. No, we're, we're a pretty good community about asynchronous communication overall. So <laughs> I, it's not like the whole world is going to shut down. It's just, you know, we're probably gonna, it probably makes sense to cancel the meeting. Uh, well, I mean, it's still, I mean, like NSM is uh, not the way it should be, but next year, maybe. <laughs> yep, no, we, we've, we've got plans, <laughs> we definitely have plans. So, um, cool. Okay. So in that scenario, the next meeting will be on January 7th. Yep. And someone is actually already can I corrected that for the uh, Asia call. And I've yes. just corrected it. For, so it looks like the Asia call came to a similar conclusion. Um, um, 
<laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. cool. Awesome. Um, okay, so a couple other minor announcements. The CI is having a little bit of, of trouble. Yeah, uh, it, 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 it's, it's being a drama queen about it. Um, basically, effectively what appears to be happening is there's some kind of a hiccup going on with packet. So, and the packet guys are hugely responsive to such things. So we just need to go find out what's happening. But there was apparently a change um, where um, it used to be that if every element of a particular cluster failed and you ended up skipping all the tests for those clusters because you had no place to run them, that it wouldn't report the skip test has failed. It would just report that cluster elements were failed. So you could see there was a problem you could see what the problem was and you know, it's, the overall job failed but you could easily tell at a glance, oh, Packet is having an issue. And apparently that behavior had shifted to reporting the skipped tests as failed. So now it looks dramatically bad because Packet went down and therefore 127 tests failed, but they were never run. They didn't really fail. They just got skipped because we couldn't run them. And you know, overall that should fail the job, but it shouldn't report to you that the whole world is on fire in the same way. Um, so the CI is having issues. We are looking into it. And it was going to look very dramatic until we figure out what's going on with Packet. Okay. Yeah, we really should start sticking some of these uh, things into a database as well. Like, oh, Packet didn't come up. Annotate that. Yeah. True, or, true. Or Amazon or Google or so on. Yeah, because we, we probably start a lot. Well, we, we're probably in the top, at least in the top 10% of cluster starters out there. I don't think. <laughs> many as many clusters as we do, because every time a every time a job runs, we're starting six clusters per cloud flavor. Um, so that, that that's a lot of clusters. Um, so that's twenty four clusters per per job. If, uh, and, if my math is right, and we we do a lot of jobs, so we we probably start hundreds of clusters a day. Cool. So but anyway, so, I wanted to let folks know because particularly with the difference in reporting, people could get really freaked out that they had somehow their PRs had done terrible things to the world. And though I mean, <laughs> maybe your PR has done terrible things to the world. That could also be true, um, but it's much more likely that you're hitting this. Cool. Okay, so with that, uh, keep that in mind if you are if you're contributing. The world may be on fire, and it may not be your fault. Um, <laughs> um, as a uh, as a reminder from Ed, there are path changes. Do you want to speak about that? Yeah, so I'll speak about this briefly. Um, <clears throat> so we 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 had we had talked before about um, making you know effectively making the NSM forwarders essentially just a cross connect network service. And we had also talked before about the path changes. Um, and so I wanted to reiterate uh, that here, not so much to walk through them again, unless there's a strong desire for people, in which case I'd be delighted to. Um, but mostly there's a link there to a, the deck that I presented last meeting that talks about them. And there's also a link to the activity diagram that sort of details how the healing works for them. Um, and it, it's a huge simplification to the healing process. Um, and I, I, I'm intending to be, you know, doing some of the work on getting there over this break. Um, but I wanted to make sure that folks took a look, number one, so they can sort of call out where this is going. And number two, um, you know, just, just to expand awareness. Um, but it, it turns out to be a massive simplification. I, I, I sat down and I wrote the sort of SDK snippet for the piece that does healing. And I can't say for sure because I haven't put it in full context to integration test it, but it looks like healing is now a single file of a hundred, approximately a hundred lines is a hundred percent of the healing process, um, which is an incredible simplification. Yeah, so the uh, the code for that is pretty uh, it's pretty simple. So if this is an area you're, you're interested in. Um, I think the whole thing comes in uh, somewhere between seven hundred and a thousand lines of code for 
so there, there was a lot of uh, a lot of people that we were able to to cut with this. So uh, if you're interested, uh, definitely definitely read through the code and uh, ask questions if you uh, if you uh, or if, if any of them pop up. Cool. Uh, Ivana, can you scroll down on your on your screen so we can get the rest of the agenda? Thank you. So we have uh, virtual layer three NSM manager uh, integration open items. Can I just uh, quickly? Uh, I I put the Kate's uh, one point seventeen before. Just it's just a quick update okay. from me. I I apologize. I I, I missed it. Uh, yeah. Uh, go for it's, it. I just did it last minute. So sorry, Tim. Uh, I know that we have much more important things to discuss. Actually, we have much more important things to discuss. So, uh, Kate, um, because um, on the e examples repo, which is running nightly, it uses the latest kind, kind already does 117 uh, as a baseline image. Um, it's okay, it works there. Uh, I have uh, done a PR today. Uh, which actually requires some changes in some of the components that we do, but nothing really major. Uh, it's there. We'll probably try to upgrade before Christmas if everything goes fine. We'll see. For the time being, we cannot verify it on packet, which makes it uh, impossible. So that's it. So we are more or less ready for it. We just need a couple of verifications, and we know that NSM runs fine on top of it. We just have to adapt to their API, uh, API if we want to go fully 117. That's it. Cool. Cool. Thank you for the update. And um, with that, um, Tim, you would like to speak about virtual layer three uh, NSA manager integration open items. And it looks like you have a presentation. So we could, um, Ivana, if you could stop the share for a moment so that uh, uh, Tim Swanson could present. Well, I did, I did add the presentation there. This is essentially the presentation from NSM Com team. If you want to show it, yeah. please. If you don't feel comfortable, there's no. No, no yeah, I'll, I can, I'll, I'll show it, um, and we can just discuss uh, how the so. Uh, Sorry, while I bring this up. Um, yeah, sorry for dropping it on you like that. No, 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 no that's fine. I, I'm not used to Zoom sharing, so I'm taking um, a, a second here. But uh, so um, I think this is the right one. Oh, that's a different presentation. But um, so the 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 point of um, this immediate um, agenda item is um, I have started. Uh, pushing um, so so Ed a while back made some changes to the API to um, allow for what I was I mean essentially at the semantic level of the API definition um, kind of allowed for what I was doing at the VL3 uh, real, real quick point of order it was a side effect of the unification um, yeah so it wasn't that a particular change was made for this or that it's a side as a side effect of the unification uh, for a remote local, there are certain things that are now expressible that were not expressible before. Right. Um, so we we ended up. Um, I, so basically, I was rebasing um, a lot of the the changes that I had on onto. Um, so the what I presented at um, NSM Con was a off of a earlier point of NSM, and um, so. This uh, change has been, um, you know, in the works for a while, but it was more just proof of concept. And then now I've started making changes to um, making fixes uh, based on rebasing on top of the latest API change. And so Nikolai, uh, and, and as expected, um, these are like close changes, and Nikolai had uh, some very real concerns on what was what I what we we're doing with virtual layer three so we wanted to discuss that in this meeting and the main topic is um, that we are the 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 difference between um, the normal 
uh, NSC idea is that um, this type of NSC needs to have connections to other NSCs of the same type. So um, in, in the same network service. So it, we're not um, we're not creating like a new uh, network service per NSC and um, having somehow to make um, connection requests with that new next network service. What I'm what what I did was I made a virtual layer three NSC do a find uh, network service call to the to a network service registry to find all of the network service endpoints for that network service and then pick out the ones that were the, the virtual layer three NSEs and and do um, connection request to those specific NSEs. So so it, it looks, it essentially looks like the, the network service endpoint is, is kind of doing what like the another network service manager would be doing. It's selecting NSEs to on a connection request and firing off those connection requests. Um, and that that semantics is that I you can't I don't think you can currently express that in the PRD for a network service. Um, there's no uh, there's no way to indicate that a specific NSC is going to needs to connect to all the other NSCs of that same type or or some maybe even a multi multiple connections per NSC. So that was what we wanted to talk about. Nikolai, do you want to add anything there? Um, uh, yeah, I think that, that it makes it slightly more clear to me now. Uh, so thanks. Um, so can we can we summarize the problem like Today, if, if, you are, if you want to consume the services from the SDK, you effectively are like, you, you're constructing a client and you tell that client, okay, I would like to consume this and that service, uh, named like this, and then I'm sending this and these labels. And then we let network service manager to find uh, all the endpoints that are matching these labels and then it around robins there. Now what you want to do is effectively have a way for the client to say um, please connect me to all the endpoints that are uh, matching this criteria. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So if I can make a suggestion, right? So there, I, there are a couple things I've been thinking about this particular problem. Um, it, and, and so it strikes me that one of the whole points of the way we structure the SDK is to simplify things, right? So basically, um, we, we break it up into snippets um, that you can chain together because it allows you to compose simple pieces together that do effectively one thematic thing and do it well. Um, and then if you, that also gives you the freedom to sub out pieces of it if you want to. So if the very, very simple IPAM that we've provided doesn't float your boat, um, you can go write your own IPAM and just put it into the chain instead and you're good to go. Um, would it make sense in your mind, Tim, to simply write a snippet that does the behavior that you need and then you could sub that in um, in an appropriate place? I mean, I, I guess the, the question is, you know, effectively, or actually, Okay, wait, I see where the problem is. The chain, the problem is that we've got chaining on the um, endpoint side, but we don't have chaining on the client side. Is that where the root of that is then? Mm. Well, I, no, I, I, th I think it's more high level. I think what we're talking about is that um, the role of the NSE in, in this proof of concept is is doing endpoint selection and connection requests with that, you know, two exact endpoints. And that is not conforming to everybody's idea of what an NSE should do. And, and so we're, we wanted to up level the conversation on, you know, should this be an NSE function? And then if so, do we want a way to describe that this is allowed? or that this is going to happen. Um, yeah, 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 but I mean, I guess the, the thing that occurs to me is, I, I, I'm, 
in my mind, effectively, what you've got is a situation where you have a pastor and a C of some kind, and it wants to go and you have an NSC and it wants to go connect to other NSCs for whatever reason, right? And, and it knows it, how it wants to do it. Exactly. And, and so what it strikes me is that <clears throat> logically you want to be able to simply write a new snippet that is the way you happen to want to do this for yourself. And what I think I'm hearing is that we've got too much going on in one of the snippets where it's both doing... I mean, I wouldn't lard a single snippet with all the possible ways that somebody w might want to connect their NSC to someone else. That strikes me as likely the wrong solution. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, so when you're referring to snippets, you're, you're meaning like chained uh, endpoint. Yes, uh, by the way, we, 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 need a, yeah, we need a good name for it because snippets is not a great name. Um, <laughs> so if somebody has a really good idea for what to call those pieces, then that's fine. I've been calling them the snippets. It's not great. Um, but effectively, you know, Here's what I, mean, I'm, I think. I mean, Ed, I think I think it's the the first. Uh, I mean, I I don't want to bypass the Nikolai's concern on when a, you know an NS manager is operating on a gRPC request that's a network service um, request, and it has fully filled out endpoint information you know what what should it be checking author you know essentially allowing in that scenario like what, does it have any authorization you know when we get off the functionality are we, you know is that no no so that, that that's, a, that's a second issue and and i think that's a valid one so do you want to and my, the way i've been thinking about that issue frankly is it's an issue of policy because I could see not generally wanting to allow that. Um, you know, you could certainly want as a matter of policy to say, I actually want things to go to where the network service manager is directing them, right? I could see that um, as, a, as a policy issue. Um, but we're clearly going to have to have some policies if for no other case than the case of healing um, that permit that. Because if a client, if a network service manager goes down and comes back and it has no idea what's going on, and the client basically reconnects to it and says, hey man, um, I have this, this connection and here's the path and you can see there where there's the authorization token you stuck in. Obviously in that case, then we ought to respect the specified network service endpoint. Um, so I, I think probably we wanna factor that out to like OPA policy in general. And then you could say, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna run with a default policy that allows certain things um, or not, so we could set up a default policy, but then it's up to the user who they want to allow to behave in different ways. Does that make sense at all? Yeah, I know you and I have talked about that, and I I, I would let Nikolai. Uh, I'm that. I'm a bit lost. Uh, can you can you please uh, show slide seventeen because there you have three endpoints. Yeah. Okay. So effectively, the way that I see it is that the note A wants to say, I want to connect to all the other NDCs that are from the same type, whatever that means, yeah. like for a, for a certain type. And it doesn't know how, how many are there. It doesn't know their labels. It doesn't know anything about them. It, it, it only knows, OK, there are certain NDCs living out there. I want to connections to all of them. And yeah. today, we, what we can express in our SDK and our uh, API that we have there is like, I want to connect to any that matches and it's only one. You don't know right. how many are out there. That's my, for me the, the, the problem. So if we have a, 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 a notion in SDK where we can tell the network service manager, please return me whatever connections are out there to all of, of these that are matching, that will solve the problem, at least in this particular case. Uh, is there a bigger problem? I don't know, maybe. Yeah, so, go ahead. Something that would, uh, something that would help um, uh, me understand a little bit more as well is uh, to understand uh, one of the, uh, the use cases uh, behind this as well. Um, and I'm, I'm not trying to invalidate the concept. Uh, it's uh, it's the, the, the opposite. Like, 
uh, it will make it a little bit more understandable as to what we're trying to what we're trying to to solve. Sure, I, I mean, I, um, so the original um, use case that we came started with was, um, you know, we have we have the idea. So at Cisco, we are really interested in you know multi-cloud solution, uh, it, you know interconnecting uh, application services uh, in multiple clouds. So we 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 you know we have some VPN related um, type solutions where we essentially set up um, intercluster um, pod networking um, across you know. Uh, a VPN tunnel or DM VPN um, using like a transit VPC or something like that, but that goes that get you know has a lot of security problems, um, and and so we liked NSM because we could operate on the workload um, level, right? So we can have network services that bind to specific application pods in um, in in different clusters, and then we could create a um, a NSE that would, um, or a NSE type that would, um, you know, we could hide the the semantics for inter uh, cluster communication, or at least inter cluster routing uh, behind that. And then an NSM also has the data plane functionality to do the inter cluster, uh, where we could add, you know, inter cluster connectivity. Uh, value as well. So this is the use case. Like we, we want, like we're using database pods as an example, but we want to be able to have specific workloads in, in different clusters to communicate only with the, with amongst each other um, via NSM. We don't want to, we don't want to expose the entire um, Kubernetes cluster network to another uh, cloud. So, um, does that make sense? Yeah, I, I think so. So, let, let me let me give one concrete example and tell me if I'm if I'm correct. So, if you might have a, a database connecting to multiple other databases uh, on multiple clouds, and so in order for the database to work, like let's say that there's you set it up with like with uh, five replicas each on each on a different yeah uh, region or cloud or so on and so you need that database to be able to talk to all other four instances in order to in order for it to operate properly and what you're trying to do is saying please give me a connection to all of them so that i may communicate with them uh directly and not have to communicate with just with just one is is that uh, is that correct Exactly right. So, like in the demo that um, I showed, like say this Azure DB pod was like the MySQL master, and um, and then all of these other DB pods were uh, replica slaves, and we, you know, in in the other apps on all the other, um, you, you know, for whatever geo uh, redundancy or you know, you have wanted to have a different app experience. So you had, um, you, but they all need to access some replica from this master and you, you just, you wanted to kind of have the same, uh, a private replica network with, with this, um, with this, and when that was what we were thinking of for, um, NSM virtual layer three as a, as a concrete example. Okay. And so, um, Ed and Nikolai, correct me if I'm wrong. So without the NSM SDK, uh, if we're doing this manually, we can get a list of all the endpoints that uh, um, from, from, the, uh, from the registry. So, and then from there, and then we, so we do, I believe we, we do have a manual path to, to make this happen. Is, is, that, uh, is that assumption still correct? Uh, yes, and that's what's, what's implemented here. My objection to this approach is that specifically this example is pretty important. Everybody is looking at this. Whatever we set as an uh, example of how we use NSM is going to replicate very quickly. That's my, my understanding and my belief. So we should be very careful with what message we send with this specific example. That's yes, 
effectively, we need to make sure that we do it nicely and cleanly, um, and that we we pick up make a wise choice about what we do and how we do it, right? Um, and so that this sort of gets to my point about, um, you know, I, I it's a really good example of how you could write a custom snippet to do something interesting and sub that in for an existing snippet from the SDK. And does that make, and that, that's part of why I was sort of musing, and please note musing, because I've not looked closely at it, that it might, rather than making an existing um, piece of the SDK more complicated, um, it might be a good idea to, to effectively look at the possibility of writing an alternate chunk, um, so, you know, an alternate snippet that we could make sure is nicely clean. Yeah, that's that that follows along my, my thinking as well. Uh, to keep the the simple the simple use case as simple as possible, because that should cover ninety five or more percent of of, uh, of most people's usage. But what you described is is also important. So, for example, I'll give you an example of a client uh, where this is important as well. So, when you want to connect to a CD, uh, as a client you can specify multiple servers that you want to connect to. And this is so that if one server goes down, you can immediately ask another server to continue on with your, with your request. You don't, just, you don't just lose your connection and, and have your client break on you. And so there's also use cases from the client side where certain databases that are designed for HA may also have a similar, similar type of request. Uh, but you don't generally, you do not generally connect to all of them. You'd only connect to maybe two others. So no more, usually no more than three. But in, while in the case of etcd, uh, you definitely want etcd nodes connecting to to all others because when they do their their votes, uh, yeah. they need to make sure that they can they can handle their their votes properly, even even once they switch over to talking back to their single HA master again. So, uh, so it's definitely a very important use case and we need to make sure that use case is easy for people to consume, but we have to make sure that it's not done in a way that, uh, that uh, encourages people who don't need that particular use case to, to take it on. Right, right, yeah, I, I agree. Um, I, I, so I, uh, I guess, um, you know, for going, Forward. I mean, the the um, the the definition of the um, you know network service in this proof of concept is is really um, simple. Like it's it's just the um, the default match uh, or the default route goes to the um, individual the, the 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 single virtual layer three NSC type. Um, and then the uh, you know and, and any other if we had any other network services we would pro we would add them um, uh, essentially before the I mean, sorry if we had any other network service endpoint types we would add them in the definition prior to that um, NS the virtual layer three NSC and uh, so the chain this would be like the end of the chain and then it would go and um, you know find all the other what I call cluster with all the other virtual layer three NSEs. Um, and I, I think that, I mean, I, I, I'm just wanting to make sure that we don't want to, that we, we have discussed maybe conveying that this is a special like terminal type of NSE or there's a, some other uh, way of saying that this thing will match with uh, Will create connections with all the other types of NSEs for this for the, that are in the registry of, of this type. Um, do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Of yeah, I mean, I, I, I totally get what you're suggesting there. Um, and and so let let let's. I, I think like the the thing that occurs to me is that we we have this lovely thing with an incredibly powerful set of matches um, in the network service. But it's not infinitely powerful, right? It's not going to always express everything the way that you would like it to. Um, it's just going to give you a really, really good 90%. And you could sort of take two paths from there. 
you can either make the matching structure infinitely complex so that it can express infinite possibility, but we've tried to keep that as simple as we can. Um, or you can allow a safety valve where you simply say, look, at some point, if what you're doing is sufficiently bizarre, you're just going to have to sort this shit out yourself. Okay. Right. Um, and, and so I think my, my current thinking, and I'm, I'm very much open to, to other thoughts here. My current thinking is that what I really want to make sure we get right here with the VL3 is not incorporating arbitrary complexity into the matching structure of the network service. Um, but rather, I'd like to make sure that um, we, yes, we're going to express the, okay, you've gotten so complicated, you're going to do your own thing pattern, that we express it well and cleanly. Does that sort of mesh with what I think you're saying, Andre? Or not Andre, um, Nikolai? Uh, yes, and I, uh, if I may, I would like to also add a couple of thoughts myself. I was thinking, please, you know. Okay, so uh, it looks to me that the VL3 should be slightly more dynamic thing. Like, even if you're able to enumerate all the endpoints at the current, you know, uh, at the particular point in time, this, the number of endpoints are eventually going to change. Like, you should be able to add more, like, at another cloud. Uh, so maybe this is the time to think a little bit into the direction of operators. Should we have an operator in our SDK, a way to uh, like um, react to active changes in the number of registered or actually the, the, the registered uh, endpoints within a service? Should we have something like this? So yeah, uh, that, that, that's certainly one possibility. I mean, another possibility that we may want to consider is if you look at the structure of our other API over the network service API, mm -hmm. it has a monitor connections call. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Do we do do we want to have something like a monitor for the registry, um, so that if you're playing sufficiently complicated games, uh -huh. you can ask to be updated um, when a network service changes? You you beat me to it. Uh, I I was actually going to suggest that we take a look at uh, how at how etcd handles some of these things as well uh, from the client side because that could help guide our our direction towards this. And so one of the things that you can do with, uh, with FCD is you have this concept of, uh, of uh, I forget the, the exact term of it, so I'm going to make one up that tries to approximate it. So basically you have a, a, a service or a server registry, and that registry will monitor for heartbeats that, uh, uh, of the various servers and when it doesn't receive a heartbeat it removes it from the list and so it basically gives you a point where instead of having to ask find a bunch of servers and say hey please think tell me what you think the, the state of the world is you have uh, a limited number of systems you can connect to that's basically back effectively backed by a kubernetes service or something similar that will feed you a list of uh of uh endpoints that you can that you can connect to and so, uh, but at the same time, it's, it's useful to have this endpoint update your servers as well. And so as things join or, or, or quit, you can then make use of that. And so uh, I think a, a monitor on that particular path would, would potentially, would definitely make sense. Uh, you could monitor the CRD, but the thing I don't like about monitoring the CRD directly is that means we've now tied the, uh, the endpoint uh, the, or the, the things that want multiple connections to monitoring a Kubernetes specific CRD. So while if we provide a gRPC endpoint for this, that means that if you decide to implement using uh, MySQL or some other system, you, you, your code doesn't break as long as the code was implemented properly for, for reporting out the event, the event of changes. So how are these monitoring uh, mechanisms going to work across um, clouds, like in through domain? That's a, that's a good question. Um, uh, so I, I would say the same way they work for uh, monitoring inner domain right now across cloud. I'm uh, sorry, monitoring connections across cloud, which is you, you make a monitor, monitor connections to gRPC call. And so somewhere there is a registry that you are addressing. And mm -hmm. so if you make a monitor call, then you are making the monitor call 
to that registry. Okay, okay. Then, then that probably sounds, uh, let's say, the NSM way of doing things. Uh, I don't know if we have a, <laughs> an ag agreement here, but at least sounds um, like a good uh, direction to explore and see where yeah, this goes. I would actually characterize this a bit more as a, we've had a positive, productive initial conversation um, where you know, we all agree that there, there is some probability of solutions in various directions and we should probably, as you said, explore more. Yeah, so how do we want to proceed? I mean, do you, do I should I turn like these slides into a, more of a document and uh, post it uh, for review, or um, just keep pushing PR reviews type uh, things? Uh, yeah, my my recommendation would be to to do to start off with what you said, to stick it into a, a Google document, and then you 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 know where our, our spec support is with. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Ed's pointed me. I can get all this info from Ed pretty easily. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that'd be fantastic because that that gives us a, a single point of instead of trying to chase down a bunch of places, it gives us a single point of that we can look at. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think that'd be a fantastic place to uh, to continue that. And if you uh, and feel free as well if if you have any if you need any help or any questions. I, I know we're not going to be around for the next two weeks. In, in yeah, this yeah, video. no, I I won't <laughs> either as well. But, so. Yeah. But feel feel free as well to to re add this to to the agenda as if you feel that things are are stagnating or yeah. or getting blocked so we can talk more about it. Um, but uh, yeah, let's 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 add this to to the to a Google Doc and let's definitely let's definitely document and discuss there. Yeah, I think I mean I'm I've probably been more the limiting factor in, in getting forward progress on this. So, um, and I know there's some interest from other people. So um, if anybody else wants to help out, then just ping me. Uh, I'm, uh, I, sh I should be on the Slack for um, the next four days or so, so. Yeah, and in, um, in the spirit of, uh, of uh, all open source projects then that, that are on the friendlier yeah. side, um, we're, we're, we're happy with any contributions we're able to give and we fully understand and respect that you don't have the time to, to do so as well. So don't feel, don't feel compelled to, uh, to push on this if, uh, if you don't feel like you have the time or, or, or so on. Like, but we're always appreciative of any contributions that, that you make, including, including this. Yeah, yeah, great. Thanks. And the, 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 the example and the demo that you have is already very impressive and, um, it's yeah, it's really been, has a lot time. of people excited. Mm -hmm. Also, has a lot of people super excited. So, yeah, no, I mean, I, so um, just on the, I, I want not not specifically this related, but um, the uh, the NSM interdomain stuff. Um, I I'm gonna try and push some documentation updates as well. Um, I push some PR fixes for. Helm charts because I use Helm all the time for uh, installing. I don't use the Make system, um, so there, you know I'll try to add essentially um, things that look kind of like uh, this with some more detail on how things are communicating and why the what the port mappings are and things like that. Um, and I, I think that's needed in the docs to even understand what's going on. So, and then maybe some usage example uh, information. So, if it folks, I mean, I think that's what I focus on for the next few days, and then uh, I'll, I'll try to get this via virtual layer, layer three content into a shared Google Doc. And if anybody wants to help out or wants to review, just uh, I'll, I'll post that to the Slack. Uh, I'm willing to. I'm very much interested into adding a proper uh, interdomain examples, example in the examples repo. Like now we have two kind deployments. Uh, should be should be easy to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, definitely ping me. But you have two kind deployments. Sorry, I, I didn't catch that. You have an example where you deploy. No, we have in our main repo. Uh, we have recently added a possibility to deploy kind to two, two clusters with the make machinery, two kind clusters to be deployed in parallel. They can coexist, and yeah, 
but I still am not sure how to how to utilize them properly. So, uh, okay. anything that I'll, I'll help. That. I've been trying to look, look at that as well, just uh, manually. But so yeah, I'll, I'll look at that. That that would be really cool. Mm -hmm. cool. So, um, is there anything else that we need to to discuss on this? Because we're hitting the the top of the hour. Yeah, I just wanted to ask if uh, if the recording from December third is available on YouTube because I don't see it, and uh, is there any reason for that? I don't know. Uh, so the recordings are uh, are not posted um, automatically. They're they're posted by uh, by a, a very nice person from the CNCF who who downloads it and uh, and then uploads it manually. So my guess is maybe she may have gone on vacation or something like that. Uh, but we we can ping and, and, and ask uh, to see to see like perhaps it was just forgotten. So we we, we can ask about that. Okay. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, if that person happens to be to listen into the tale of things, thank you very much for for, for your work. Yeah, because I, I found the next one on December 10th, but I wanted to see the SROV demo that was shown there. Yeah, it, it, uh, yeah. yeah it, it's also, yeah, that's actually a good point. I mean, also, mistakes are occasionally happen, right? So maybe one got missed. That happens yeah, sometimes. Of course. Yeah, yeah that, that's almost really what it was. It was, it was, just, uh, it was just an oversight. Thanks for, uh, thanks for bringing it up. Okay. We'll, we'll ask about that. OK, awesome. Okay, um, because this is apparently our last call for the year, I would like to tell, thank the whole community here. And it has been an awesome year for, for the project. We started a lot, lot smaller than what we are today. So thank you all. And I hope that 2020 is going to be amazing. Yep, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. And everyone have a happy new year and we will see you all next year yeah <laughs> january 7th january 7th yeah bye bye take care bye everyone <laughs>